Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, so, those of you that have been paying attention uh, might notice that I did release another version of the beta um, installer yesterday. Uh, this was targeted mainly to correct some bugs that were being reported with the DualShock 4 plugin, uh, causing an unhandled exception error. Um, as far as I can tell, this isn't a widespread bug. It seems to be localized, so uh, it's hard for me to track down. Uh, but luckily, the logs and all that stuff that Input Mapper generates is pretty much pointing me in the right direction. Um, so hopefully this latest release has fixed that. Uh, those of you that have had the issue, if you could give the new installer a try, let me know. Um, and for those of you that haven't had the issue, if you could make sure that the changes that I made haven't caused any degradation in performance, uh, because I did have to make these changes in the actual, uh, the main loop of the application. So I want to make sure it's not eating up uh, any more memory or if it's within the margin of error, uh, more preferably. So, um, there's not much actual UI change. Actually, I don't think there are any UI changes in this version um, because I'm still working on the back end classes and implementation for the uh, device state modifiers. Um, you might notice that the settings are visible in the profile, but they don't have any UI associated with them yet. Um, that's because I haven't gotten to the UI stage yet. Uh, but basically, um, expanding on what I was talking about last week is I'm going to take this top-down approach to adding uh, more plugin functionality for more of these, uh, for some of these more complex plugins uh, that are going to either need to view or write to multiple channels at the same time. And the benefit of this is since the device state is a shared concept in a lot of portions of the application. Excuse me. Um, it also means that the plugins are going to be able to be multi-rolled or be able to put into place in multiple areas of the application. Uh, so I really only at first intended this to be uh, applied to the output state um, because I wanted to be able to control things like dead zone, stuff like that. Uh, but after looking at it further, it's not too much of a leap. Actually, it's not a leap at all for me to also implement this to the input state the output state, and the return state. And what that means is you'll have several different chances within the life cycle of a packet to modify the data. So you have the input state, which is going to be the data as soon as it comes from your input device, the DualShock 4, before it goes through any kind of mapping or macros or anything like that. The input state mapping or uh, the input state modifiers. I'm, I haven't really come up with a name for it yet, so I'm kind of back and forth as to what I call it. Uh, but anyways, you're going to have a chance to modify the data before it hits any of the macros or the mappings or anything like that. Then they're going to go through the macros, the mappings, and any hooks or interrupts that exist in between there, uh, such as the trackpad to mouse moving, movement. That's what exists in those that hook layer. And then from that, once those changes have been made to the state, then it's going to go back through another mapping state modifier list known as the output state modifier. And this is where you get your last chance to modify the state right before it's sent to an output device. Uh, so basically, um, I don't know the implementation. Um, it just wasn't that hard for me to implement on my end, seeing as how the uh, all the data is the same. It's just a matter of adding in an extra, um, an extra, you know, break off point for it to go out and look for these. So, um, wasn't any work on my end, so I figured mine as well. Maybe you guys can find a use for it. Um, on top of that, there is also the return state modifier, and where this will be helpful is things like the uh, light pad. The rumble, stuff like that, being able to modify those channels. And um, depending on its performance, I might even move the DualShock 4 light bar settings out of the DualShock 4 settings drop down and put them into this area or make a uh, output state modifier that's just for the light bar. Um, I still got to kick that idea around a little bit. Um, I haven't been totally sold on the idea of putting the setting into the actual device settings 
instead of in a profile uh, because a lot of people like to have different uh, light bar settings per profile um, and having to change that with some sort of a custom action or something like that um, hasn't always been what people have wanted to do so uh, I'm gonna kick it around make sure it works okay make sure it doesn't hurt performance if I do that um, but if it looks good, that's probably the way I'm going to go with the light bar settings. It's probably going to move into there. Um, so that's about it for what I've done this week, uh, what I'm planning to do next week. Um, I want to give a, uh, I know I've been stressing this, but I want to give another uh, reminder to you guys to, if you have an account with the normal Input Mapper website uh, that you were using with 1.6, Make sure you go to the beta website that is beta.inputmapper.com and you create an account there and then you'll see a menu option that says migrate account. Uh, you want to make sure that you migrate your account, especially if you are a donor, um, so you can keep that donor status automatically without me having to at a later time go back in and manually uh, see, you know, if you guys email me or tell me that you don't have it or anything like that. Uh, this way it's automatic while both websites are running. So make sure you do that. Um, also, if you do have any issues with the beta input mapper, make sure you use the 1.7 uh, website that is beta.inputmapper.com again. Um, not, uh, I know you guys have been asking for help on YouTube and all that stuff. I can't get your logs and stuff on YouTube. Um, and that on top of that, uh, there's really no benefit to us engaging with people on YouTube that much whereas our website uh, if we you know generate that traffic from you guys you know going on there looking for help and me responding solving things um, not only does it help with our SEO uh, that is you know help our web page rank higher because it's getting uh, more traffic and all that stuff it also makes that information a lot more accessible to other users so if you have a common issue and I'm able to help solve it uh, it makes that information available when people search for it, uh, other people that are having the same problem. So um, I'd really like everybody to try to make sure to use the new beta forum for all their issues uh, and make sure you post your logs and all that stuff. And put Mapper 7, uh, 1.7 that is, has a great, um, like a dump functionality, which exports all kinds of stuff, which is... Uh, usually helps me solve things at a single glance. So, um, yeah, if you guys can make sure you do that, that'd be great. Uh, so that's about it, guys. Um, thank you again for the support. As always, uh, keep using our website. That's our one of our main so sources of income is you guys just going on there, browsing around. As a matter of fact, just use the forums to chat, um, share settings with each other, stuff like that. Uh, go for it. That's why I have it up there instead of, you know, hosting on some free, uh, cheap website. So, um, it, it's about it, guys. I can't think of anything else. So, uh, I'll cut this one out, and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one.